Police released new details in a homicide case involving a woman found dead on a trail in Carlsbad. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. And I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. Police say the 68-year-old woman was stabbed to death. It happened at Hosp Grove Park while she was either walking or jogging. News 8's Shannon Handy has an update from Carlsbad tonight. Carlsbad police spent hours here yesterday and they were back at it today. At this point, they are not releasing the victim's name, but do tell us that she is from Carlsbad. Meanwhile, news of her murder has left people in this area scared. I didn't expect something like this to happen around here. Bikers and walkers out at Hosp Grove in Carlsbad Tuesday reacted to news that a 68 year old woman found dead along a trail here Monday was stabbed to death. At this point, no suspect is in custody. I used to play with my kids out here. My, my youngest is 19 now. We used to come in these trails all the time. And to find out that someone's murdered five minutes from your house, it's heartbreaking, it's shocking. Carlsbad police believe it happened between 10 a.m. and noon. A hiker contacted them after finding the woman's body. Detectives combed the area for hours. They believe the woman was out exercising alone. It appears that she was out walking or jogging or running on the trails. Few additional details are being released, so police did provide a description of a man seen in the area at the time. It's unclear if he was involved. He's described as a white or Hispanic adult between 5'10 and 6'3", with a husky build, tan complexion, dark hair. He was wearing a black shirt, shorts, and hat, and was walking slowly with a slight shuffle or limp. As the investigation continues, Carlsbad police say they're sending officers out to patrol the area more. They're also advising anyone exercising in the park to look out for your surroundings. Try and go with a partner. And if you are alone, let someone know when you're leaving and when you're expected back. We have a phone number set aside for information, 760-931-2165. Any help would be appreciated so we can hopefully solve this horrific crime uh, and then figure out how this happened and what happened. Carlsbad police have not said yet if this was a random attack or not. If you, of course, have any information, they'd like to hear from you. Tonight, another new daily record for new coronavirus cases in San Diego County. Health officials are reporting 1,546 new cases, a positive rate of 9% out of more than 17,000 tests taken. 73 new community outbreaks have now been reported in the past week, and the county's adjusted case rate has climbed to 13.1. 16 additional COVID deaths are also being reported today as the county nears 1,000 since the pandemic began. The Surgeon General is issuing a dire warning as COVID hospitalizations continue to rise. There are now more than 85,000 people hospitalized nationwide with the virus. As Nancy Chen reports tonight, that's setting a new record for the 14th day in a row. At St. Louis University's ICU, every room is full. In the beginning, I wasn't seeing such young patients, and um, now um, lately we're getting patients in their 20s. COVID patient Mary Daly is not in the ICU, but being alone is taking its toll. I don't know what to expect. Missouri is one of six Midwestern states that are the hardest hit in terms of hospitalizations. With record-breaking numbers of hospitalizations across the nation, the Surgeon General explained the severity of the moment. You may not be able to go in and get your heart attack treated. Uh, right. I've heard hospitals not being able to provide care for pregnant women because they're filled with COVID beds. Here in New York City, a field hospital that hasn't been used since the peak of the pandemic last spring has just reopened. The temporary treatment center is on Staten Island, where hospitalizations have tripled in the past three weeks. The majority of the patients are going to be people that were treated for COVID, uh, have gotten past that phase where they're really critically ill, but still need uh, care. And even as the race to a vaccine shows promising results, a new poll finds nearly a quarter of New Yorkers say they are unlikely to get the vaccine when it becomes available. Nancy Chen, CBS News, New York. Two sources have told CBS News that the CDC is considering publishing new guidance that would reduce the recommended quarantine period from 14 days to 7 to 10 days. The restaurant business continues to struggle nationwide and right here in San Diego. More than 100 have already closed here locally and sadly experts predict that more will follow. News 8's Kelly Hassadal spoke with a restaurant owner in University Heights who announced that she is closing her doors for good. 
Well, operating a restaurant is hard even when we're not in a pandemic, so you can imagine what a struggle it is right now. The owner of Small Bar here in University Heights says after more than a decade in business, she must close her doors. It was pretty hard. Um, you know, I've, I've run this business for 11 years. This is my heart and soul. To have it kind of happen this way um, is, is pretty sad. Karen Barnett says shutting the doors of Small Bar on University Heights permanently was hard. It is more than just a bar, you know, it is it is like a second home for a lot of people. She made the announcement on social media two weeks ago. Physically and emotionally exhausted from years of setbacks. <laughs> Um, and this year I fought hard, but um, the numbers just don't add up. She says since the pandemic hit, business has been down 75%. So tomorrow evening, she'll be locking the doors for good. Small Bar now joins the growing list of local bars and restaurants that have closed in 2020. According to the website SanDiegoVille.com, there have been more than 100 so far. Restaurants in all different neighborhoods, from downtown to La Jolla to Encinitas. My heart breaks for them. A recent report by Yelp states as of August 31st, nationwide, more than 32,000 restaurants have closed. The majority of them have shut down for good. If you love that business, you truly do need to show up and show your support um, or more of us will just continue to close. She says Small Bar was the kind of place that had regulars who ate here daily. Today, she found a chalk message outside the doors. She says the memories here, incredible. There's been a lot of friendships made. There's been a lot of, I mean, people have met, fallen in love, got married, had their receptions here. You know, they bring their new babies in and show me their babies um, that they probably created from being a patron. <laughs> So, um, you know, it, it's hard. She's hopeful someday she'll be able to open another bar and restaurant. But for now, this chapter is over. In University Heights, Kelly Hesedal, News 8. A judge has re rejected a request for a restraining order that would have allowed in-person dining at L.A. County restaurants. The restriction is set to take effect 10 Wednesday night. Attorneys for the California Restaurant Association asked for the restraining order today, saying the latest move could put restaurant workers out on the street. The L.A. County Board of Supervisors also upheld the new restrictions, which will be in effect at least three weeks. A wrongful death lawsuit has been filed against the city of Chula Vista. The family of Oro Nunez Sr. says Chula Vista officers used unreasonable force while detaining him, resulting in his death. As News 8's Brandon Lewis reports, they also claim race played a role. Now, Carlo and Barbara Lee, the family says when they called 911, they were hoping to get mental health assistance. Unfortunately, just a short time later, he ended up being pronounced dead at a nearby hospital. Today, the family said they filed suit in an attempt to get answers and hold the police department accountable. He will always say, I'll soon be back, but this time he never came back. The family of Oral Nunez Sr. is demanding answers and suing the city of Chula Vista after he died following an incident with police. His family says Nunez needed help around midnight after he had a reaction from taking his medication. Police claim Nunez was trying to jump out of a second-story window at a home on Camino Carmelo. Radio traffic confirms officers struggled to detain him. 31, he's still resistant. We've got one cop on. He's still resisting with one cop are you out on the street? How is the turf? 131, we need a wrap. I got one in my car. They used a wrap device to restrain him and say he was conscious and breathing when they turned him over to medics. Can I five copy subject in the wrap? Can I five copy subject in the wrap? But his condition is at the center of the dispute. Mr. Nunes was clearly in need of medical attention and was laboring from several of the officers putting their collective body weight on him. The family's attorney repeatedly pointed out Nunez had a small frame standing just five foot four. Minutes later, he was unresponsive and soon pronounced dead at a nearby hospital. Our nuclear family has been destroyed and we're just coming to grips with it. We're trying to deal with the situation at hand the best we can and we're just asking for of some type of answers. Both the department and district attorney's office have said little during the still ongoing investigation. The family is suing for damages and demanding the release of body worn video. We're calling for a true change in the way law enforcement agencies respond to calls for help. The official autopsy result from the medical examiner's office is sealed pending the outcome of that investigation. The family says, however, they conducted their own autopsy 
which show that he died from asphyxiation. Carlo and Barbara Lee. All right, Brandon, thank you. An environmental bill written by a local congressman was just passed by the House. Representative Scott Peters authored the Ocean Pollution Reduction Act Part 2, which he says will end up helping San Diego's pure water program in addition to the environment. Peters says the bill could save San Diegans millions in tax dollars by reducing red tape at the Point Loma Wastewater Treatment Facility. Forcing San Diego ratepayers to pay billions of dollars to upgrade the Point Loma facility to a secondary level would be a waste of money because the enhanced advanced treatment that the plant currently provides, along with its 4.5 mile long outfall, does not harm the ocean environment. The bill now needs to be passed in the Senate and signed by the president before becoming law. President-elect Joe Biden formally introduced several members of his incoming administration today. President Trump also made his first public appearances since administration officials began the formal transition process. But the president still has not conceded the election. Natalie Brand has the latest from the White House. Well, good afternoon, everyone. President-elect Joe Biden presented his key diplomatic and national security nominees Tuesday. We're going to have the first woman lead the intelligence community, the first Latino, an immigrant, to lead the Department of Homeland Security, and a groundbreaking diplomat at the United Nations. The picks include Alejandro Mayorkas to serve as Secretary of Homeland Security. My father and mother brought me to this country to escape communism. And Linda Thomas-Greenfield to represent the United States at the UN. Only in America would we be where we are today. Nearly three weeks after the election, General Services Administrator Emily Murphy officially signed off on the beginning of the transition process. Well, I'm pleased to have received the ascertainment from GSA. The Biden-Harris transition team is now in contact with federal agencies, and a key focus is the country's most pressing issue, the coronavirus pandemic. President-elect Biden sat down with NBC Nightly News anchor Lester Holt. I think we're going to not be so far behind the curve as we thought we might be in the past. And there's a lot of immediate discussion. And, uh, and, and I must say, the outreach has been sincere. The president did not address the transition, but made brief remarks praising the stock market. I just want to congratulate all the people within the administration that worked so hard. On Twitter, President Trump still says his challenges to the election results are moving full speed ahead. So you invite President-elect Biden. But CBS News has learned the president has signed off on sharing the high-level daily intelligence briefing with President-elect Biden. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Tonight, President-elect Biden said he would meet with President Trump if the president asked. Next week, Mr. Biden is expected to unveil his economic team. Former Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen is rumored to be the front runner for Treasury Secretary. Meantime, the Dow Jones hit a record today, breaking 30,000 points.